I'm going to hold this because I'm a little short for the microphone stand. Um, hi, I'm here today to talk to you about smarter and cuter bots, uh, like this little one that I drew there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself so you can get, uh, I guess, my thought process behind why I do things the way that I do, which will make a lot more sense after I show you the next few slides. Um, my name is Rachel White. I am OHO on Twitter. I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft. Previously, I was a software engineer at IBM Watson and Adobe Behance, and then I was like, I really hate writing production code, so now I'm an evangelist and I get to build cool stuff all the time. It's pretty rad. Uh, I love cats. I love cute things, and I really love making Twitter bots, especially with Node. It's super easy and super fun, and I'm going to walk through making one today. Um, some of the previous projects that I've made with Node is RoboKitty. It is an automated cat feeder. Um, it's running Node, Johnny5, Socket.io with a particle photon. This was my first Node project. It was also my first hardware project. Um, because I liked, you know, let's make it extra hard on myself. And I, I built this about two years ago. Uh, there's no tests for it, so I wouldn't recommend, you know, trying to build it yourself and feeding your cats with it unless you're okay with not knowing if they really got fed or not. So uh, I also, in my spare time, make glitch art and hand make lenticular prints with like interlacing stuff that I've written. So I like art and code and design and. Also video games, I made a game about my cat, Rick. Um, I promise you there won't be too many cats the rest of this talk, I just had to get it out of my system. But there will be t cute Twitter bots. Uh, this is an example of a Twitter bot that I made. Uh, the type of bot it is, is it's pulling from a corpus of data, and I will talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple different types of bots that you find, uh, pretty much on Twitter, uh, or I guess old conversational bots on AIM or IRC maybe. Uh, but for today, we're going to be specifically talking about ones on Twitter, and I'll be giving you examples. Uh, we will be focusing on Markov chain bots, corpus-fed bots, generative image bots, and just plain weird bots. So Markov chains. Um, I don't know if you, you remember horse ebooks. It was this Twitter account that would just tweet random stuff, and people were like, oh, it's totally, you know, like a Markov chain making all this, like, weird tweets out of text. But it was actually just a person tweeting. But if you know what that looks like, that is, you know, what a Markov chain is. But to be more specific, um, a Markov chain is a stochastic model describing a sequence of possible events in which the the probability of each event depends only on the state attained in the previous event. Um, I went to school for art, so when I read that, I was like, okay, I, I, need, a, I need a picture to help me understand this state thing. Um, with two states, A and B, in our state space, there are four possible transitions, not two, because a state can transition back into itself. So if we're at A, we could transition to B, or stay at A, and if we're at B, we can transition to A or stay at B. Um, oh, <laughs> so basically what that means is just that you're giving it a set of rules. Um, if you're generating an uh, ebooks account for yourself or uh, you're, you're using some kind of corpus of data to generate this text, you're going to give it rules that says, you know, usually probably it's going to be some kind of grammar rule, like if there's a transitional phrase, you want this to pull in for the first part of the sentence, and then the second one, it'll attach it by looking for similar words and similar sentences. So I made one for myself, and so it pulls regularly from things that I say normally, which isn't always making sense, and then it generates new tweets from it. So I'm going to show you uh, three of my favorites that I guarantee you that I did not say these were generated. The kitties are being bad, so I'm going to use Microsoft Tech. I had a lovely night full of so many things I want to be satire. And this one's my favorite. I can be provoked by a bird. I don't even know what prompted that. The next one that we're going to talk about is corpus-fed bots. Um, 
Those are basically in linguistics a corpus, plural corpora, or text corpus is a large and structured set of texts. Nowadays, usually electronically stored and processed, uh, they use, they're used to do statistical analysis and hypothesis testing, checking occurrences or validating linguistic rules within a specific language territory. So similar to Markov chains, but less strict with the rule set, you're just pulling from a big chunk. Um, it's used in natural language processing a lot, but more often used with random Twitter bots that combine or utilize text snippets in a more generalized way. So Darius Kazime has this amazing, amazing repository called Corpora. And what it is is it drills down into a ton of really specific topics. And then it gives you JSON data that you can parse however you wish. And it goes from like religion to games to foods, art, architecture. And then inside all of these folders, there's subfolders of like subsections of all those topics. So you could make random really interesting stuff. And this is what I did for the cute bot that I showed you earlier. The way that this bot works is I have um, my corpora, which is all of these cute little compliments. So like, hi, I like your cute style. Or baby animals are pretty cute, but you're cuter. And then I have all of the Japanese cow moji at the end. And I have my Twitter API running uh, on the streaming API. And it checks for new follows and new replies. And depending on if they follow me, I give them a compliment. And then it keeps on giving them uh, more randomized compliments. So it, it like made people happy. And you can still talk to it. It's up if you want to try it. Uh, we're also going to talk about generative image bots. So what are those? There's a lot of different options. There's SVG generative through Tracery, which is this really amazing library that was originally made for text replacement. And an evil genius was like, hey, wait, SVGs are text. Let's randomize that. Uh, you could also compile images through image magic or graphics magic. Or you could just alter the raw image binaries. I don't know if you've ever opened up a JPEG in a text editor and like deleted some stuff and opened it and looked at it, but it looks pretty cool. Here are some of my favorite generative image bots. This one is Tiny Neighbor. This is made through um, Cheap Bots Done Quick, which is the tracery randomized SVG thing. Basically, every time it tweets out, it gives you this cute little house front with a door and some steps. And it changes the colors and the placement. And it's really neat. This is one you've probably seen more. Uh, it's called Soft Landscapes. Made the same exact way. It's all SVGs. This is uh, what <laughs> Soft Landscapes looks like. I can't even see it. It's so small on my screen. But it's just like a whole entire SVG with all of the different sections defined. And then they're randomizing the linear gradients and the points that the like mountainscapes go across. My brain can't handle the amount of time it took to like figure out all of those points. But it's super popular, and it's tweeted out. And you can also edit it live on, um, if you go to Cheap Bots Done Quick, there's a whole source there that shows you exactly how to do it. Uh, these are my favorite. Weird Twitter bots. They're just weird. They're, they don't really necessarily follow along with any rules like Markov chains or corpuses, or they do, and they have, just have weird rules. Um, they're just weird and fun. So this is Death Mountain. It's just uh, Death Mountain made Cleromancer, and it tweets out random stuff every day. And then this one's my favorite. It's Ominous Zoom. Every day it picks an image and just randomly zooms in on a certain face. So what are we going to make today? Uh, we're going to make a Twitter bot utilizing Twitter's streaming APIs, Graphics Magic, and Microsoft's Cognitive Services, specifically the Face API. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to tell you about, which is going to make your life a lot easier if you want to make Twitter bots, there is this NPM package called Twit. Um, make sure you have Node and NPM installed. This is the URL for Twit. And then you just sign up for Twitter's app for auth tokens. And I guess I can't type with both hands and hold this at the same time. So I'm going to show you what Twit looks like now. Hold on. All right. So Twit is on GitHub. It's really great. It, it, all it needs is the key secret and tokens that are generated whenever you sign up for Twitter's dev tools um, and register an app. You just plug it in there, and then it gives you the option to either utilize Twitter's REST API or a streaming API, so depending on what you need or what you're doing with your bot. 
you pick those. <laughs> so it's usually either tpost or tstream, and it opens it up. And I have a little demo of one in here that I made. Don't steal my tokens. I change them after every talk. <laughs> So this is all that you need for Twit to be able to send out word wrap. Oh, I made it. I turned it off. So this is all you need for um, uh, okay to send a tweet. This is just the REST API for the bot purpose. We're going to be using the streaming API, and I'm going to go in here and just node Twit. 1.js. Yay, it worked. Let's double check. I'm going to refresh. Oh, it worked. So it's pretty easy, and it's easy to customize um, to the things that you need. All right. So in addition to Twit, we're also going to be using Graphics Magic. Uh, who here has worked with Graphics Magic or Image Magic before? OK, not that many. You should be glad. It's not great. Um, so Graphics Magic is a tool to create, edit, and compose or composite images. It's super versatile. You can access it from the CLI or whatever language or interface you want. And there's a node port of it that you can use via npm install gm. But it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, the down and up sampling of images is kind of poor quality. It requires some hacky workarounds. In Node, you've got to use a ton of callbacks to do multiple compositing because of the way that it structures its uh, like merging together of images. And if you want to host it on a server, you have to be able to install some binaries. So if your hosting provider doesn't give you that option, then you have to pick a different one. So cognitive or the. Let's see, Graphics Magic was originally, I think, a Perl library. And then so you can install it here, and it tells you like a ton of the different things that you can do with it. Uh, you can either get the size of an image, find out the height, add one image on top of another, uh, whatever crazy town is, flip, magnify, rotate, blur, crop, edge. For, for today, we're just going to be compositing some images. And I have an example of that. So all that we need to run it is, you know, you say, OK, Graphics Magic exists. Um, we're going to be putting an overlay over images. That is right here, but I can't show you yet. Otherwise, it'll ruin the surprise. And then we have cats, which is a picture of my cats. I guess I lied. There will be more cats. Um, and basically, we're just going to combine those two images and have it write output.jpg. And then you get to see how exciting it is. And it's not in the file, so you know I did make this up and do it beforehand. All right, so it ran the script, it combined it, and it output their good cats, Brent, with the little drawing I did. So it's not great quality. It, uh, it rasterizes and like gets weird around. You can see the little artifacts around the picture. But it gets the job done, because Twitter ruins your picture quality anyway. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to talk to you about Microsoft's Cognitive Services, which is really cool. And I'm not just saying that, because they pay me to. Um, so basically, if you've ever wanted to work with machine learning type stuff, and you were like, ah, OK, that seems cool, but there's not really an easy way to do it. We, can, we gave it to you. It's a whole bunch of REST APIs from computer vision, content moderation, emotion analysis, facial recognition, video, so there's streaming versions of the face API, uh, linguistic analysis, a ton of NLP stuff. There's even like training your own like machine learning model for conversational bots. It, it gets pretty in depth. And it's super easy to use. If you know how to hit an endpoint, end you can use everything that they offer. So for this bot, we're going to use the Face API. And the Microsoft Face API uh, basically just detects one or more 
human faces in an image, and you get back a rectangle for where the face is with x, y coordinates, and then you get facial attributes which contain machine learning predict predictions of where the facial features are. It also tells you age, gender, pose, smile, facial hair, along with 27 landmarks. Um, obviously, that's trained by a person, even though it's machine learning, so if it tells you you're old or, you know, you might get mad. <laughs> So let's try that out. Um, this exceedingly flattering photo of myself, I ran it through Face API. It gave me this face rectangle back, but for a live demo of what that looks like, I have Face.js. There's this really awesome um, repo called Project Oxford that someone made that makes it really easy for you to utilize any of our cognitive services. So we're gonna give it this other flattering photo and see how old it thinks I am. But I already know, so that's why I picked that photo. <laughs> so let's see, node face.js. It's going to hit that Project Oxford um, key. And then this is what it returns you. It's saying that, you know, top left, top X left, um, wait, I'm backwards. The, the rectangle x, y, and then how wide it should be from those points, and it gives you a bunch of information about the pupil, and the nose, and the mouth, and then it even tells you like how rotated the face is, and it guessed I'm 25, which is why I like this API. All right, so. Now that we tried that out, I'm sure that you are probably all like, cool, what exactly are we making? And just like Sailor Moon transforms into a cuter version of herself, we're gonna make a magical and cute image bot utilizing all of those things that I just showed you. Um, I was super inspired by Japanese Perikura booths because uh, what they do is it detects your face and it like, makes your skin super smooth, and makes your eyes huge, and then you get a screen where you get to draw on top of your photo, and it's really cute, and I was like, what if I just made a bot version of that? So I did. And it is the magical and cute image bot. Um, basically, you tweet an, an, an image at this bot, and I run it through Microsoft's facial detection API, and I send it back to the client with my uh, information of where everything is, and then utilizing graphics magic, I overlay a bunch of cute stuff that I drew on top of it. Um, this is what it looks like. It is a mess. Um, so it's comprised of two different parts, the server and the face. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you open up your Twit stream, and I'm doing a lot of checks because if you make Twitter bots, you have, to, you have to make sure that the people that you're interacting with are following you. Otherwise, you're going to get flagged as spam because if you're just like sending everything out and they're not following you, it's gonna look like you're just sending them stuff. So I do some checks to see if they're following me and then I do some checks to see if they have tweeted any or added an image at me and I reply with the you know, correct reply for that. Um, and if they are following me, and if they did send, an, or send me an image, I'm adding that to a queue because I don't want to hit my rate limit and then get banned from Twitter that way. Both of these things have happened to me multiple times, so <laughs> I learned my lesson. Um, so it adds it to a queue and then runs so often. And um, in my queue, I'm saving the status ID of the tweet, which is, you know, if you ever look at an individual one, it's in the URL that individual number so I can reply directly to that and I'm not just sending it out into the void. Um, the username and the path to that image that they send me. And then I'm really bad at scrolling so I queue up my task, I have the interval set and when I run it I'm creating a temporary file and sending it over to face. So face is all of the graphics magic callback hell that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's basically just step by step taking the each part of that image. So I have to do each eye one by one. There's ears, so I have to do two different ears and then the nose and the cheeks. There's also blush cheeks and it's one step after another and then the image gets worse and worse quality each time. But the way that I'm, I'm randomizing that uh, 
part of it is up here at the top, I just have a simple randomizer that I run on all of these other scripts. So I think there's a lot of different years. So that's all it is. I'm just exporting this like list of all the different images that I drew that way if I want to, you know, do something seasonally for Santa or like Valentine's Day or Halloween, I could just swap the images out and update it and it would randomly pick the new ones. And it matches it. So um, it knows whatever it picks on the left. I'm just appending right to the end of it. So let's see. We start adding things to face. I'm not going to explain every function because it's pretty much the same thing with some uh, midpoint math that I'm doing based off of the XY coordinates where it places the stuff. And the math isn't that great, so sometimes if you take a picture and there's way too many people in it, you'll get like giant uh, uh, giant ears, And but I, I kind of like it. It gives it some personality, and then I don't have to fix it. So, a lot of callbacks. And then once it's all done, it sends it back over to server and it tweets it out. Um, if you want to try it, it is magical and cute. Um, if you tweet a selfie at it, make sure that it can see both of your eyes. So if you have any pictures from like 2008 and your bangs are covering your face, it won't work. Um, let's see. I am almost done. So I, I launched this bot back in November. Um, people immediately tried to break it by uploading images of everything but faces. Not but faces. Um, everything besides faces, so like their pets, things that vaguely resembled faces that would work with Snapchat filters maybe. And so I had to fix that stuff. And sometimes it glitched out, but I like it. So if you want to try it, there it is. Uh, I encourage you to make your own Twitter bot because they're really fun. Um, and yeah, I just have one special secret announcement, I guess. I announced this at Seattle JS when I spoke there last week. I don't know if anybody listens to any of the Changelog podcasts, but the Changelog is launching its first JavaScript podcast, and it's called JS Party, and it is going to be launching on February 27th. Um, it's going to be live every Friday, and it's going to be me, Michael Rogers, and Alex Sexton. And so you can come ask us questions, and you know we'll be talking about new projects and stuff. And that's it. Here's more info. I have my slides online. Um, Rachel is awesome is my bio site, and I'm cool online is where all the other things that I make. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Nope. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and it involves cats. Hold on. So um, there's actually a couple. Um, there's one that I made that is called What Cat? It, like, the fact that it's just a REST API makes it so easy to, to make super simple single page applications with it. Like, it's kind of addicting. I'm actually going to try and go through and make one with every single cognitive service that we have, um, which is going to be hard because some of the ones that you have to train yourself are kind of difficult. So this is which cat are you, and it's utilizing the emotional analysis API. I hope none of these pictures are bad. Um, OK, so you hit meow, and it's hitting the API, and then Oh, that doesn't have a face. OK, let's try that one. Oh, yay! So basically, it, it finds your, your um, emotion. There's eight different emotions. And what I'm doing is I'm just looping through and comparing the values that you get to find the highest one. And once I have the highest one, I um, similar to how I was randomizing the um, different images for the ears and the noses with the bot that I just showed you, I randomize whatever cat you get. Though all of these cats were handpicked for their emotion, and I named them all, and I wrote little stories about them. So like fancy, you're not going to get fancy here if you're angry. So it, it is tied to each emotion, but that's, that's another simple one. And then... Um, Deal with it, but 
a colleague of mine down in Austin who makes a bunch of really cool stuff. Oh, I guess I have to go to an actual article about it because they wrote a bunch of press about her. She used the Face API as well. And what she did is, this is a demo of it up at the top, it knows where your face is. Come on, data. And it, it slides some shades down on top of your face. And it supports up to like, uh, like over 100 people, I think. So we're, we're still working on more interesting demos. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Nobody else? Cool. Thank you.